through the final corner. Across the line. P2. Thank you very much. Sick race. So, so sick. So close to Sebastian Vettel. Oh man, I can't wait to edit this video. Wait, what? Where's the file? Oh my god. I cannot believe that I've just gone ahead and wasted like two or three hours of my life recording the Chinese Grand Prix only to find out that either I have not recorded it the whole time or I've deleted it off of my computer and I can't recover it. So basically, welcome guys to F1 2017 career mode. This is now round number three instead of round two. I'll just give you a really quick recap of what happened in that Chinese Grand Prix. So we had a heavy rain affected race and I decided to go for an extreme wet setup in order to compensate or make myself faster in the race. And I don't even think I made it to Q3. I uh, stormed my way through the field. The pace was not good in the wets. Um, but then it went to intermediate conditions about halfway through the race and I just came alive in that second half of the race and I was chasing everyone down. Um, yes, I had good pace, but um, what really helped me is the, the leaders. They weren't opting to switch on to intermediate tyres and they stayed on the full wet until the end of the Grand Prix and I was overtaking cars left, right and centre um, until I got up into second place chasing the race leader Sebastian Vettel down for the race victory and I literally ran out by... I, if I would have had another sector, I would have won the race. But Vettel got away and won the race by under a second. And man, that was an intense race. And I can't believe I can't show you guys that. But yeah, that was the race. Um, so we got second place. And we still lead the driver's standings now heading into Bahrain. But um, yeah, here we are. This That is the scenario. And uh, I can only apologize. But yeah, here we are. We find ourselves uh, knocked out in Q2. Wanted to do a, a run on the soft compound tyres to get through to the final part of uh, qualifying and start the race on the softs because I wanted to the one stop for this race, but um, the, I saw the lap wasn't good enough and I decided, no, let's just can this. We'll start from outside the top 10 and we'll do the one stop today because, again, you can get away with doing the one stop if you start on the uh, middle compound of tyre and it is a lot faster than doing the two stops. So... That's the strategy we're going to employ, um, so kind of sacrificing track position in order to get um, a better race result. And since we are starting you know, a little bit further down the pack and we need to take some engine penalties anyway, we may as well start from last place, um, simply because we're only going to lose five or six spots or whatever it is, and it's so easy to overtake at Bahrain, especially now with the engine we have, the drag reduction systems we've got going. Um, it's really easy to overtake in a straight line, so if we have a good first lap, we could probably be in the position we we're in anyway, so yeah, we will essentially um, take the hit now, and, and it probably won't even cost us in the race, so that's qualifying, that's the, the fast, that was the Chinese Grand Prix, time for the race now for round number three. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Kimi Raikkonen's perfect lap yesterday sees him start from pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Perez, Esteban Ocon, and Sainz, Hülkenberg, Grosjean, Alonso, and Kevin Magnussen. Vettel, Massa, Lance Stroll, and Bottas, Verstappen, Ericsson, Pascal Wehrlein, and Jolien Palmer, Kvyat, and a McLaren rounds off the grid. So here we are then for the Grand Prix of Bahrain. A few people with grid, uh, grid penalties, which I was actually quite surprised about. Bottas, uh, Verstappen, and also Sebastian Vettel, I believe. So quite a few key runners there starting fairly way down in the order. So as long as we can catch up to those guys, we may not even lose any championship points at all uh, versus our rivals. Now, one thing I also forgot to mention um, in regards to the last race, Lewis Hamilton DNF'd. So, yeah, um, Mercedes are absolutely nowhere in this championship. Uh, Bottas got like fifth or sixth in that race. So uh, really our only title uh, contenders right now are the Ferraris. So um, for the next few races, it's, it's really just targeting those guys and making sure we're going to lose so many points to them. Five red lights, and we are underway for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Thankfully, because you're seeing this race, 
I actually didn't make a Muppet of this one. But either way, heading into turn one, let's see what we can do. Up the inside of a Force India. No, that was a Sauber. Um, but either way, it is 14th place in one of the Ferraris on our left-hand side. That's Sebastian Vettel. We go around the outside, really tight through there. Just a wall of Williams cars just preventing us from moving forward in this Grand Prix. And we actually got in front of our championship rival, Sebastian Vettel. We might get in front of Massa and Stroll as we head into turn five. We can only get one of the Williams, though, and that is 11th place. And we squeeze him out nice and nice and easy there, and that is uh, job done for us. So... Uh, nice start so far. Fernando has actually moved up a few positions. He's well inside the top 10 at this stage as we uh, have a little look up the inside of Stroll. Nothing really doing there. I don't want to be held up behind him for too long because we know this Williams is absolutely shocking when it comes to a chassis and um, their cornering ability is just not great. So you don't want to be caught up behind them in the early stages. This is our best opportunity to move through the field while everyone is still bunched up and, you know, second guessing and um, hesitating a little bit. We got the inside of uh, Stroll there. Have a little... I don't know what that was <laughs> with uh, my commentary. But either way, we're in a P10. Next up is Magnussen. And the guys were, oh my goodness, that is Sebastian Vettel coming out of nowhere. How did he overtake the Stroll as well in the same motion? But uh, either way, he has an, a little look up the inside in the turn five. Uh, nothing really doing there. And looks like we might hold on. It's very tight as we turn in there. I am always going to do that. If you don't have your nose alongside, I will turn in. So it's down to the AI to make sure. If they want to avoid a crash... They've got to back out, but um, yeah, there we go. It's P10. We're coming up to the guys who are now starting on the Supers, and um, for us now, very important to make sure that we can close the gap to the race leaders, especially the likes of Raikkonen um, and the Red Bulls up front as well. Can we go the inside of Magnussen? Not really a smart move. Going up the inside into the final corner, it'll really compromise your run into this long straight, and you probably won't get DRS if you overtake, so better to hang back, get a nice exit, and then just punch it off the final corner, and that is P9. Vettel is going to follow me through as well. This is going to be a, a bit of a trend all day, isn't it? Vettel's just going to follow me through, just uh, reacting to all of the um, overtakes that I make in this Grand Prix. I'll also cut the inside of turn two there. That was very cheeky in defense of uh, Romain Grosjean. Doesn't really work out, though, and he drops now to P8, so... Um, already, we made so much ground, and Fernando is now kind of falling backwards, as you come to expect with that um, really weak power unit that he's got, not getting the engine upgrade. Still, it seems. How is this still an issue? It's almost November. The game came out far too long ago. But either way, we're settling into the race now. Um, uh, I, I will admit as well, when I caught up to Fernando, I actually hit a bit of a brick wall when it comes when it came to just making progress. I couldn't get near him for some reason. In the straights, it was okay. Vettel pulls into the pit lane on the previous lap, and I was a bit desperate up here. I wanted to get up the inside because I wasn't making any progress at any part of the track, and that was the closest I got to Fernando, so I took my chances, got up the inside, and that is us up in a P6. So um, after that, car came, the car kind of came back to me, and I was able to progress again. Yellow flag through the third sector, and it's Fernando. It's actually Fernando. Okay, clear. I can't believe that. I overtake him for, for sixth place. He was looking so good for some points. Finally, you know, he didn't drop to last, like, after the first lap or two. And he's out of the Grand Prix. I uh, honestly am not going to get any support in the Constructors' standings throughout the entirety of this career mode. I watch other people's career modes, and they upgrade their cars uh, really well. Oh, Six point three seconds. We're dropping back by around four tenths a lap. They're on old super softs. We think they've got two stops remaining. The time last lap was a one minute thirty-three point three. Okay, so yeah, O'Connor's up the road and he's uh, pretty pacey at the moment on his super soft tires. But I watch other people's career modes and I see how much progress not only themselves are making with the upgrades, but also their teammate and how they're able to back them up in the constructors. And I look at Alonso. And I just... Makes me want to cry. It, it just does, but... Um, either way, we've uh, now found our way into the lead of the Grand Prix. Esteban Ocon made his stop on the previous lap, and now um, that was a bit of a opening of the doors for everyone else behind us, because now Raikkonen has found his way on the back of us. All the traffic cleared up, and now he was able to unleash a little bit of his pace, and now he's going to unleash it on me as we go down into Turn 1. He goes to the outside. Nothing really doing there. I actually ran in a little bit deep there. That was a bit clumsy from me. And now, uh, I was going to say Alonso. Alonso's not in that Ferrari. He wishes he was, but um, there we go. That is Raikkonen taking the lead of the Grand Prix. I'm weaving every which way to find an avenue. We go back up the inside in the end, and that is back us 
That is us back into the lead. This commentary today has been shocking. I gotta say, the, <laughs> the whole losing the recording of, of China has really got me tilted. It's really got me quite angry. You would not believe the amount of time I wasted today trying to recover that file. Um, I don't want to think about it. But either way, we're into the pits now on lap 11. Um, it also happened that uh, Hamilton was diving into the pits as well on his super soft tyre. So he took them a long way and I was actually uh, looking behind me to see if anyone else would dive into the pits. I thought, okay, since Hamilton's doing it, I'll dive in as well. And uh, we actually just managed to rejoin in front of him. So yeah, we managed to cover him off quite nicely and we'll be able to kind of hold him back in this Grand Prix as it were and uh, see what we can do in this race now. But uh, we'll have the undercut on Reich and we'll try and put in some uh, really beastly laps for the next three or four laps until he makes his uh, final pit stop, obviously. And then we'll take the race from there. We're looking like maybe a podium, uh, depending on how many people we can overtake. Magnussen is also uh, really well placed in this Grand Prix as well, but it is a little bit hard to tell sometimes when um, there's so many varying strategies going on at the moment. And we make a mistake in that middle sector. Unfortunately, just undoing all the good work we've done so far, really undoing the work that the McLaren pit crew did in getting me back in front of Hamilton. I've just thrown that away and relinquished him into what might effectively be the victory of this uh, Bahrain Grand Prix. We'll have to wait and see, though, on the results of where Raikkonen rejoins in this race. But now we have Bottas on the back of us as well. So he's on a very similar strategy to us. He started on the softs and has gone to the softs again. Now, I'm not entirely sure why he's done that. He could have gone a long way into this race. But either way, he's going around the outside into turn one again. We've dealt with this many times over the course of this race, and we'll deal with it again. Um, Bottas having to hang in uh, again for another corner or two. He might got the inside into turn four or five, though. Um, this seems to be a good spot for the AI, because if I get a compromise run through the first little section there, um, their best chance is to stick it up in rich revs, get in the slipstream, and then try and dive bob me up the inside into that corner. But for Bottas, it looks like he was probably saving fuel a little bit at this stage of the race. Um, very close to his pit window, probably, but um, he finally sticks it up in rich revs. With a bit of slipstream, there's a force in here on our inside, actually rejoining on the track. And um, we safely managed to all negotiate through there without damage, and um, Bottas pulls into the pit lane on the next lap. So. Yeah, bit of a weird race right now. We've got myself, we've got Hamilton, now Magnussen right in front. He won't be in contention. I think he needs to make another stop, but Perez right behind is for position in this race. So, yeah, this could be a pretty interesting race. Um, we still have the guys way up in front, still yet to make another stop. We've got Magnussen right in front, who is now making his stop. And then there's the likes of myself and Perez, who are now going to the end of the race on our medium tyres. And I believe Sebastian Vettel behind, chasing us down too, so... There's a lot to play for in this Bahrain Grand Prix. Ultimately, um, if I can, I'd like to beat both the Ferraris, but ideally I would like to beat Sebastian Vettel more than the other, um, shall we say, since he's a much, so much closer in the championship. Speaking of being close, there's Sergio flying up our inside on the uh, DRS straight, and we go around the outside into turn number one, and uh, we retake second place in this Grand Prix. So. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a really hard fought battle for the rest of this race. Now, us versus Perez, you can see the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel right behind as well. So the more squabbling we do, the more we invite him into the fray of this battle. And I think Verstappen is the car behind him. I'll need confirmation on that, but this could be a four, maybe five-way fight for second place in this Bahrain Grand Prix. And we haven't even factored Lewis Hamilton into this, who is now behind by about 10 seconds. So... Yeah, it is going to get pretty darn tasty if this battle continues, uh, which I think it will, because we have decent straight line speed, the cornering speed is okay, but these medium tyres are only going to go off versus everyone else in these dying laps. Three wide into turn one. I like how I just say that so calmly. Um, but we managed to defuse the situation quite nicely there. Um, hold on to second place. Vettel gets up into third, though, as Sergio tried to shortcut the turn two chicane. Is it even a chicane? I'm not entirely sure, but... Um, yeah, it's not the, the best way to go through there, and that is not the best way to go through the final corner. What's saving a little bit of fuel, I am trying to uh, make sure I can manage that to the end, and I decided to let Vettel go up the inside uh, in an effort to get DRS back. Didn't really work, but we had Slipstream on this back straight, and we go around the outside again. We'll have the inside for the next left-hander, and he's still there. He's still there. I wasn't expecting him to come back at us like this, and he squeezes pretty much off the track. Uh, where's Fernando Alonso and his 
all the time. You have to leave her the space. That's what we need right now. A bit of respect, Sebastian, please. Championship rivals. This is a long season. You don't want to be getting me pissed off so early on in the season, but okay. We've survived. I'm chatting absolute honk right now. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but five laps to go. Um, still have track position. Don't have much fuel, though. I'm doing my best to work on that, though. Standard revs. I didn't uh, put it up in a rich there simply because we really needed to save some. And now we've lost a position to both Vettel and Perez through turn two and three now. Vettel cuts the inside chicane and actually manages to make that work with Sergio having to take a sidestep there. And we move back into third. So um, this battle is definitely not over yet. As we go back up the inside of Vettel, we needed to make that move because Vettel has a ton of pace. And we had to defuse the situation um, almost instantly. But... That little attack um, didn't last too long. We might go again up the inside into this next right-hander. But Vettel on his fresher medium tyres, better traction, better car still, is uh, always going to come out on top there. And uh, yeah, we're left to fight away for third place as Sebastian Vettel just sails off into the distance trying to charge after his teammate for the victory. If Ferrari, if this was real life, if this was realistic, I almost wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, Ferrari found a way to slow down Raikkonen and, and then Vettel win the race. Um, it just, it's what we come to expect of Ferrari these days. But meanwhile, we're banging tyres here with Sergio Perez on the penultimate straight. Um, I might let him have this position here because we'll get DRS, we'll get Slipstream off of this uh, start finish straight and we will get DRS. So we're going to be the first cam off the rank to absolutely smash past Sergio and uh, see what we can do in a straight line. We've now got a really angry train behind us. Ocon and the Red Bull. So let's hopefully get up the inside of Sergio and put a couple cars between those guys. And uh, there we go, back into third. So we just got to keep this up. Make sure that we can um, not make any mistakes on crucial corners and just let that battle ensue while we just pull away. Now, Hamilton is also getting involved as well. So... Yeah, it's, it's not a place I want to get involved in. Yes, it would make the video so much more entertaining in terms of squabbling in that massive battle. But I'm thinking championship here. I'm thinking long game. I need the points after, you know, just missing out on the win in uh, China. But we'll uh, press on the, as best we can. I did actually take that opportunity to save a little bit of fuel through the middle sector. I have been doing that over the course of the last 10 laps, really just minimizing the wheel spin in those traction zones to look after the rear tires. And then as soon as we get to... Um, the start finish straight and also that back straight rich revs just absolutely flat out rich revs and using all of the engine that we can Kimi Raikkonen in the end goes on to win the race um, no real surprise there he started at the front all of his rivals pretty much had some kind of issue and um, he was able to capitalize fully buys his way back into the championship he might be in the lead depending on how uh, the points makeup is after this race but for us though it is going to be another podium and that streak continues into Bahrain. Alright, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. How has that happened? Roman Grosjean, uh, somehow, like a thief in the night, has taken the Bahrain Grand Prix. Lance Stroll has somehow got his way up in a second as well in that dog awful Williams. And, um, yeah, I'm just absolutely dumbfounded. I crossed the line expecting a podium, a happy message from the engineer, and now we've been demoted to fifth. Would you also look at the fastest laps from Roman and Lance Stroll as well? 2.3 second lap on the last lap, probably, for Roman. Steals the win. I'm going to let x Matty G take this one. Does Who tests this game? Fucking chipmunks. It is just... Preposterous! Now, I don't remember seeing that when I did testing um, back in February, but that is... Uh, I mean, I can understand it online. You can, oh, it's just a, a race or online, or you can adjust it in the league tables or whatever, but career mode, we have to live with that now. And uh, we've been a, denied a podium, which is just a joke, really. It just is, but... Um, either way, at least it wasn't like Sebastian Vettel or someone else um, in the championship fight getting the win and getting those points over me, but still pretty annoying to go through that after everything that happened today anyway with losing the Chinese Grand Prix race. Uh, I'm still so angry that I'm not able to show you guys that race because it was so, so good. I was getting flashbacks to Malaysia 2013 episode 21, but 
Yeah, there we go. That's been this video for today, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. to see plenty more F1 2017 videos. This is, you know, the season where we're going for the title. And if that happens again, honestly, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose it. But, um, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed nonetheless. Uh, the next episode should be the Russian Grand Prix. And um, we're going to be turning on strict corner cutting rules because I need to kind of stop the corner cutting and practice for my my league rates. I think from here on in, I might actually just stick to strict corner cutting rules. I have seen a lot of comments about that as well. So um, I'll endeavor to clean up my driving um, going forward this season. But yeah, thanks for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you next time.